So here in the output, we are seeing lots of nulls. And as I explained earlier, null means there is no value. Okay. So Blake and Adams have not made any shipments. And therefore, there is no part number, project number and quantity for Blake and Adams. So that means these values are null values. That means it's, it's not blank, it's not zero, it's just null. There is no value for that. Okay. This is also useful as we will see later on. In tables, we have got lots of columns. But for some tables, for some of the columns, we may not have given a value. We may have left it empty. So when you leave it empty, the value, the database is going to store what is called as a null value for that field. Okay. So null means that a field does not have a value, which is fundamentally different from saying that the field is blank or it is zero, because blank is a value for textual fields. Zero is an actual value for numeric fields. When you say null, you're saying there is no value. It's not blank. It's not zero. There's simply just no value for that field. That's what null is. You're going to see null quite often. So you need to understand what null is. Okay, so now we continue uh, the supplier. Same problem. Supplier number, part number, project number, quantity for every supplier who has made at least one shipment. For suppliers who have not made any shipments, include only the supplier name. And we saw this. This is the query we saw. Select, uh, etc. So suppliers left join shipments. This left is what is telling us the table on the left suppliers, even rows there which have no match in the table on the right, please include all the values in that table. So every supplier is going to appear in our output because we said left join. So every, every member, every row of the table on the left will appear. Okay. So this is the operational part of the query. Suppliers S left join shipments SP on S dot S number equals SP dot S number. And in this case, if you look at the two tables, suppliers and shipments, this is the table on the left in the join. And this is the table on the right in the join. So when we say left join, what we are saying is, get me all the matches as before with the regular inner join. But if there are no matches for anything on the left table, whether there are matches or not, include everything from the table on the left hand side. If there are no matches, then leave the other fields blank. But everything on the left hand side should appear in the output. That's what a left join is. Okay, so rows on the left table with no matches in the table on the right will still be included. And of course, those with matches will still definitely be included. So it's an inner join plus some more. That's what this left outer join is. Okay, so that's what we saw earlier. And we get, of course, this result as we have already seen. Okay, so for suppliers who appear in the shipments table, who do not appear in the shipment table, or everything else is null. Okay, so I've just taken a lot of time to explain the concept of outer join. You really should try to understand this because there are many times when we want to retrieve information for which an outer join becomes essential. It's going to be either a left join or a right join. That depends on you know, where you would like to put the fields as we'll see. Okay, so the same thing you can, uh, you can write it in two different ways. Right, so you, if you mention the suppliers table first, then you will do a left join. But it's perfectly possible that you mention the sub shipments table first. Because after all, when you're joining two tables A and B, you could say join A join B or B join A. It's going to be the same thing, right? So here I've said suppliers join shipments. But since we want any suppliers who have not made shipments to also appear, so in this case, when suppliers appears on the left, it's a left join because we are going to say from the table on the left, include everything. From the table on the right, include only the matches. right? But if you put the suppliers table on the right, then we'll say this is a right join because we still want everything from the suppliers table, not from the shipments table. right? From the suppliers table, whenever there is a match or no match, everything must appear. So in this case, if we put suppliers on the right hand side, we're going to say do a right join. The results are exactly the same. It just depends on where the name of the table is appearing. That's it. Okay, so here's the example of right join. And we've already seen that in the previous query. 
Okay, so in this case, supply shipments table is on the left, suppliers table is on the right, but we still want all suppliers. That is why we say this is a right join. Okay, something similar for you to do. List the project name, part number, supply number, quantity for every project that received at least one shipment. For projects without any shipments, include only the project name. Okay, this is very similar to what we did for suppliers. But I would say, this is your turn. Pause the video, write your answer, and then proceed. So here, we could have written it in one of two ways. We could have done either a right join or a left join. If we mention project second, then we'll do a right join. Otherwise, we do a left join. Okay, so here we're saying select the project name part number, supply number, quantity from shipments join projects, but right join because no matter what, we want all projects. Okay, that is for projects without any shipments, include the project name. So we want all projects, no matter what. But uh, the part number, supply number, quantity will appear only for those which have matches. Those which don't have matches, those are going to be now. And of course, we are doing the join on the project number j dot j number equals spj sp dot j number okay and of course sp and j are the alias so you could have written it like this or you could have written it with the left join in which case you would put the projects first and shipments later okay so you have choices in this case of left join or right join both will produce the same results okay now we come to another kind of query given that we have looked at all this we can do one more trick we can say list the names of suppliers who have made no shipments. Remember, Adams and Blake have not made any shipments. We want to list only those two names. Okay, so this is the shipments table. This is the appended supplier information. And Blake and Adams have made no shipments. Right, so when you join the two tables, your super table is going to look like this. The joined super table is going to look like this. Right. So how do you get the information for Blake and Adams? You first use the outer join. Right. You need to use an outer join. Otherwise, these two will not figure at all. Left join, right join, doesn't matter. If you want these two to figure, you have to use an outer join. But you use an outer join and then select only these two rows. Right. You just select the supplier names only the, in such a way that only these two suppliers appear. Okay. So we may say select supplier name from shipments SP, right join suppliers S, right? Because we want to include those two suppliers also who have made no shipments. So you need to do a right join with suppliers because we mentioned shipments first. On S dot S number equals SP dot S number. This is fine. But in this case, what's going to happen is all the supplier names are going to appear. But we want only those supplier names who have not made shipments. We don't want S1, S2 and S4. We want only S3 and S5. How will we get that? We can easily do that. We can select only those rows in which there are no matches in the shipment table. In other words, we can say where SP dot supplier number is nil, null. Right? So, since you have done the join and the only fields for which this supplier shipments table fields are going to be null will be those that correspond to people who have made no shipment. So we could have said where SP dot S number is null or SP dot P number is null, SP dot J number is null, SP dot quantity is null, SP dot ship data, doesn't matter. We could have mentioned any one of those fields and those are going to be null only for these two suppliers who have made no shipments. Because if the supplier has made some shipment, then you will have a non-null value for the other fields. Right. Uh, I would suggest it's a good idea to use SP dot S number is null. Okay, that is that is what it is because you're doing the join on the S number field, right? And that is when uh, you you definitely be right because the other fields could be null just for missing data. Okay, so that's how you would do this. So you can use the fact that in an outer join, the table for which there are no matches will have null values. You can use that to answer queries like these. Right? Suppliers who have made shipments or suppliers who have not made shipments, 
When you say no shipments, then you can always do an outer join and then select those rows for which there is no match. And you find that out by testing for null. Now, incidentally, when you test for null, you don't say where sp dot s number equals null. You don't say that because null is a special value that is not equal to anything. So you have to say is null for null. You don't say equal to null. Okay, because null doesn't match anything. So you'll have to say is null. In fact, null doesn't even match null. It's a very special kind of thing. The only way to test if something is null is by using is null. Okay, so once again, similar thing, same question actually. List the names of suppliers who have not made any shipments. This time, use a left join, right? Earlier, we used a right join. I'm just saying change it around so that you use a left join. It's quite easy. This is all straightforward as before. But this time, we're going to say from suppliers S, because we want to use a left join, and which means the table from which everything needs to appear should appear on the left. So suppliers is the table. We want all suppliers. So we put that on the left and then we do everything else just as before. Okay. So when we say we want a left join in this case, all we have to do is really change the order of the tables. Put suppliers first and shipments later. That's it.